Now if you like puzzles, you've probably heard of Einstein's riddle. This is a logic puzzle where you have to figure out the position and colour of a house and the nationality, pet, drink and cigarette brand of the owner using a series of statements and some logical deduction. The question at the end of Einstein's riddle that you have to figure out is who owns the fish? So the story goes that Einstein wrote this riddle when he was a boy, although other sources claim that it was written by Alice in Wonderland author Lewis Carroll. In reality, it's unlikely that either of them wrote it. The riddle mentions a cigarette brand called Cools, which first appeared in 1933. At that point, Einstein was in his 50s and Lewis Carroll had already died. So it's unlikely either of them are the author. So I was trying to find out the origin of this riddle, and that's how I found the zebra puzzle. The zebra puzzle rose to popularity when it was published in Life magazine in 1962. The zebra puzzle is very, very similar to the Einstein riddle. There's just a couple of subtle differences in the clues. What surprised me is that one difference between the puzzles makes Einstein's riddle significantly easier than the zebra puzzle, as we shall see. So let's get into the puzzle. The Life magazine article reads as follows. It's entitled, A Problem for the Logical, Who Owns the Zebra? The facts essential to solving the problem, which can indeed be solved by combining deduction, analysis, and sheer persistence, are as follows. 1. There are five houses. 2. The Englishman lives in the red house. 3. The Spaniard owns the dog. 4. Coffee is drunk in the green house. 5. The Ukrainian drinks tea. 6. The green house is immediately to the right of the ivory house. 7. The old gold smoker owns snails. 8. Cools are smoked in the yellow house. 9. Milk is drunk in the middle house. 10. The Norwegian lives in the first house. 11. The man who smokes Chesterfields lives in the house next to the man with the fox. 12. Cools are smoked in the house next to the house where the horse is kept. 13. The Lucky Strike smoker drinks orange juice. 14. The Japanese smokes parliaments. 15. The Norwegian lives next to the blue house. Now, who drinks water and who owns the zebra? In the interest of clarity, it must be added that each of the five houses is painted a different colour and their inhabitants are of different national extractions, own different pets, drink different beverages and smoke different brands of American cigarettes. One other thing. In statement six, right means you're right. Life International will be glad to receive answers from its readers and will publish one or more of these which best combine, in the editor's judgment, the proper solution with brevity and clarity in expounding the logic by which this solution was reached. No intuitive answers, please. I would like to echo that last paragraph. Riddles, Codes and Ciphers will be glad to receive any answers from viewers and if you want to publish a comment below, please do so with brevity and clarity. So the first thing we're going to want to do to make this a whole lot easier to solve is to draw a grid so that we can keep track of all the information. So along the top we'll put house numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and down the side we'll put the house colour, nationality, the pet, and the drink of choice and the smoke of choice. If you'd like to have a go at cracking this puzzle yourself now will be the perfect time to pause now you've got all the information on the screen. Please pause now because I'm about to start going through how you get to the solution. So now that we have the grid, there's a few pieces of information we can put in straight away. Clue number nine tells us that milk is drunk in the middle house, so we can pop milk in the grid under house number three. And clue number 10 tells us that the Norwegian lives in the first house, so we can put the Norwegian under house number one. Now for our first bit of logical deduction, clue number 15 tells us that the Norwegian lives next door to the blue house. Because the Norwegian lives on the end of the street, there's only one house next door to him, and that is house number two. So house number two is blue. Now this is where the zebra puzzle and the Einstein riddle differ. In the zebra puzzle, clue number six tells us that the greenhouse is directly to the right of the ivory house. However, in the Einstein puzzle, the greenhouse is directly to the left of the ivory house, or the white house. So for the Einstein riddle, the greenhouse can't be house number one, because we already know the color of the neighbor. We know the greenhouse can't be house number three, because the occupant of house number three drinks milk. And from clue four, we know that the person in the greenhouse drinks coffee. And the greenhouse can't be house number five because there is no house to the right of it. That means that the greenhouse is number four, coffee is drunk in house number four, and the white or ivory house is house number five. From there, using the rest of the clues, which slightly differ from the ones here, 
you can fill in the grid kind of like a Sudoku, placing things in that can only go in one place, and from there get all the way to the answer. But the zebra puzzle is more difficult than that. You can't just keep filling things in the grid. It requires a little trial and error and a few other techniques that I will show you. So the next step for the zebra puzzle is to work out what colour house the Norwegian lives in. We know it can't be blue because that's in the grid already. We know it can't be green because clue 6 tells us the green house is directly to the right of the ivory house and there is no house to the right of house number 1. For the same reason we know it can't be ivory because the house next door would have to be green and we know it's blue. And we know it can't be red because clue 2 tells us that the Englishman lives in the red house and it's already occupied by the Norwegian. So by a process of elimination this house must be yellow. Clue 8 tells us that cools are smoked in the yellow house so that tells us what the Norwegian smokes as well. And now that we've got cools in the grid, clue 12 tells us that cools are smoked next door to the house with the horse. So the horse must be in house number two. So the next step is to figure out what the Norwegian drinks. Again, using a process of elimination. We know it can't be milk because milk is already in the grid. We know it can't be coffee because clue four tells us that coffee is drunk in the greenhouse. We know it can't be tea because clue five tells us that the Ukrainian drinks tea. And we know it can't be orange juice, because clue 13 tells us that the Lucky Strike smoker drinks orange juice. Therefore, the Norwegian must drink water. And that is the answer to the first part of the riddle. Who drinks water? The answer is the Norwegian in house number one. So this is where it starts to get tricky. None of the clues slot directly into the grid at this point, so we're going to have to use a little bit of trial and error. So looking at the nationality of the man in house number two. We know he can't be English, because clue two tells us that the Englishman lives in a red house. We know he can't be Spanish because clue three tells us that the Spaniard has a dog. And we know he can't be Norwegian, because Norwegian is in the grid already. So that leaves us with the Ukrainian or the Japanese man. So if we put the Japanese man in house number two, we know from clue 14 that the Japanese man spoke parliaments. So we'll put parliaments in that column as well. And that just leaves the drink for house number two. So we know it can't be water or milk, because they're in the grid already. We know it can't be coffee, because clue four says coffee is drunk in the greenhouse and this house is blue. We know it can't be orange juice, because clue 13 tells us that the Lucky Strike smoker drinks orange juice. And we know it can't be tea, because the Ukrainian drinks tea. So none of the drinks fit in the grid with the Japanese man in house number two. That means house number two must be occupied by the Ukrainian. And for clue number five, we can put the Ukrainian's drink in as tea. So what does the Ukrainian in house number two smoke? Clue seven tells us that the old gold smoker owns snails, so it can't be old gold. Clue 13 tells us the Lucky Strike smoker drinks orange juice, so it can't be Lucky Strike. And Clue 14 tells us that Parliaments are smoked by the Japanese man, so it can't be Parliaments. That leaves us with Chesterfields. So what we'll do now is we'll go through the clues we haven't used, and we'll put the little pictures next to each other in little blocks, just to make the next bit a little easier to visualise. So the Englishman lives in the Red House, so we'll put Red and English together. Clue 3 says the Spaniard owns the dog, so we'll put the Spaniard and the dog together. Clue four, coffee is drunk in the greenhouse. Clue six, the greenhouse is immediately to the right of the ivory house. Clue seven, the old gold smoker owns snails. I'm gonna leave clue 11 for the moment just because it's a positional clue that could be on either side, so it's kind of hard to visualize and Chesterfields is already in the grid as it is, so we'll just bank that one for later. Clue 13, the lucky strike smoker drinks orange juice. And clue 14, the Japanese man smokes parliaments. So now that we've tidied that up a bit, hopefully that'll make the next step a little easier. Now we're not going to be using the grid for the next couple of steps. We're going to focus on these blocks that we've just made. We're going to try and figure out the nationality of the person who owns the snails. So we know they can't be Ukrainian because the Ukrainian owns the horse as we know from the grid. And they can't be owned by the Norwegian because the snails are in the house with the old gold and the Norwegian smokes cools. We also know that the Spaniard goes with the dog so he can't own the snails. And we know that the Japanese man smokes parliaments which means he can't come from the old gold smoking snail house either. This just leaves the Englishman, so we can attach these two blocks together. We now know that the Englishman lives in the red house, owns the snails, and smokes old gold, but we still don't know which number house he lives in. Now we can use this same technique to figure out what the Spaniard smokes. We know he can't smoke Cools, Chesterfields, or old gold, because they're already spoken for, and we know that the Japanese man smokes parliaments, so the Spaniard must smoke Lucky Strike, and therefore drink orange juice. Again, using the same logic, we can look for who drinks coffee. The Norwegian, the Ukrainian, and the Spaniard are already spoken for. And we know that the Englishman lives in a red house, but the coffee drinker lives in a green house. So it must be the Japanese man. So now that we have these three big blocks, it's quite clear that the Englishman lives in house number three, because he is the only one who can drink milk. All the others have their drinks assigned. 
And now looking back to clue 11, the man who smokes Chesterfields lives next door to the house with the fox. Now that house number three is full of snails, the fox must be in house number one. Putting in the last two blocks is pretty simple. We know from clue number six that the greenhouse is directly to the right of the ivory house. So the Japanese man lives in house number five, the Spaniard lives in house number four, and his house must be ivory. This leaves one gap in the grid, that is the Japanese man's pet, which of course must be the zebra. And that is how you solve the zebra puzzle. Now after all of that, one obvious question remains. What kind of person owns a pet zebra? So looking at all the elements we've added into the grid, nearly all of the labels start with a different letter of the alphabet. The only doubles are coffee and Chesterfields, orange juice and old gold, and Spaniard and snails. I think the creator of the puzzle was trying to give each label a different starting letter, so you could fill in the grid with just the initials, which might explain why there's a pet zebra or an ivory-coloured house. Given that there's several doubles, it seems like the creator of the puzzle couldn't make it work, but I have come up with a solution for this. If we swap the Spaniard for a man from Qatar, make the coffee an Americano, and trade the orange juice for a vodka, we'll use every letter of the alphabet except X. Let me know if you had a go at solving the puzzle. Please leave a comment below with some brevity and clarity. That would be fantastic. If there's any other riddles or logic puzzles you'd like me to have a crack at, please let me know. And thank you very much for watching.